Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. Now in our lead story tonight, the groundbreaking, earth shattering, mountain moving, boot shaking expose from the very people who brought us another authentic, factually correct documentary that stood the test of time. Also known as Britain's gold standard for journalism, the Channel 4 documentary. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand how important this documentary is. It is meticulously researched, very well presented, from the get-go riveting and presented in such high class and impeccably accurate. And now, I'm honoured to present this documentary to you. Here's Channel 4's groundbreaking documentary about the Mahamolakaru of the Easter Sunday Massacre. Your Honour, I would like to call to the stand my surprise witness, the ghost that never lies. But I, I'm, I'm the only one who can see him and hear him, so I'll let everyone know what he's saying and doing. Objection, Your Honor. This is ridiculous. Overruled. I'll allow it. You better be going somewhere with this, Mr. Griffin. Thank you, Your Honor. Ghost that never lies, did you witness the events that took place on that fateful day? You did. Well, how interesting. And uh, do you see the culprit or culprits in this courtroom today? You do? Yeah. Oh. Well, would you kindly point him or them out for this court? Don't point at me, you jack! Oh, come on, who messed up with the tape? I mean, can we, like, really play the real clip of the uh, documentary from Channel 4? The one that is groundbreaking and bring our viewers uh, up to speed? Security. Nothing's mm. gonna happen. Hey, I didn't do anything. Oh, yeah? Well, how about this? You think we were born yesterday? You didn't do anything, oh. huh? Uh, I've got rights. Look, I... Look, Ed. He's got a picture of your wife. Ethel. Oh. 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 All right. Anyone else here seeing his wife? That's all right. Uh, th that's okay. I mean, come on, man. We ha really have to get our act together. Can we be serious for a moment and, and actually play the clip, uh, the, the, the uh, Channel 4 documentary, the groundbreaking one? Say what now? Uh, the executive producer has decided not to air the clip because it's demeaning to the people. Okay, hang on. Okay, okay. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been told by the executive producer of this show that we unfortunately will not be telecasting the clip from Channel 4 due to its demeaning nature and its very crass attempt to politicize and profit off of 275 innocent lives. Let's get real for a moment here. Now if Channel 4 and its staff have forgotten those innocent lives that matter, look to my left. They are the innocent victims of this heinous massacre carried out by deranged, sick individuals. Those families who were left to bear the pain are still dying every day. The pain these deranged terrorists have caused is unforgivable. And yes, we need to find the truth. Not fantasies, but the truth. So that in the future, another 275 uh, innocent Sri Lankans would not pay the price for the stupidity of each and every one of us and our attempt to go behind shiny lights. So, Channel 4, let me get this right. You pompously claim that there is groundbreaking evidence that you have acquired and it's just a media secretary of an ex-terrorist carder on camera not presenting a single picture, a recording and an audio recording or any tangible evidence, not even dates of specific incidences but just making a blind statement, hearsay. And that's your earth-shattering, shocking evidence to prove that the former president killed to come to power? Keeping the sarcasm on the so-called mockumentary aside, let's talk real facts. Every year towards September, Sri Lanka awaits some form of slander. Ever since we defeated the LTTE in May of 2009, some form of anti-Sri Lankan event has been happening in time for Geneva UNHRC sessions. This year, the UNHRC sessions begins uh, on the 11th of September, that's tomorrow, and will run till the 13th of October. And this year too, as expected, here comes the announcement of another expose. The lead role this time was different, as was the theme. 
Still, the ultimate aim was to build discord, create disharmony and weaken national security by removing officials who have protected this nation, our very own heroes. Unfortunately, the Cardinal has officially plugged himself into this plot as well. Two economic asylum seekers are the latest star actors in the Channel 4 mockumentary. However, the much ado about the 47-minute program allocated only 10% of its show to the allegations aiming to remove Major General Suresh Saleh from his post as state intelligence head, a call officially echoed by the Cardinal immediately following the program. I mean, the individual who asked for international inquiry about the Easter Sunday massacre after not believing the case presented in uh, the Sri Lankan courts and not believing the Supreme Court's verdict didn't even take one single breath to investigate whether these claims by Channel 4 were valid against the much decorated Major General, but was very swift to request for his removal. The crux of the program aims to present the notion that Major General Suresh Saleh facilitated a suicide jihadi mission as that was the only means to bring Gotabe Rajpaksa to power as president. That suicide mission was the Easter Sunday massacre on the 21st of April 2019 by eight suicide bombers killing 275 innocent victims. The program starts with the Cardinal alleging a grand plot to come to power. If the Cardinal has evidence of a plot, did he present the evidence to the two presidential commissions and the parliamentary select committee? The allegations of a plot to come to power is link, uh, linked to the Channel 4 star witnesses who also echoes the same. But neither he nor the Cardinal can explain how, without a grand plot or mass murder, the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna, the SLPP, swept the polls in February of 2018, the local government elections, clearly signaling that the government that was in power, the Yahapal Nejok, when the Easter Sunday massacre took place, had already lost the people's mandate. It is a pity that Channel 4 took no pains to cover the path to violence by the leader of the suicide mission, Zaharan Hashim, in 2016. No mention was made that uh, the intel units uh, shadowing Zaharan were disbanded and General Suresh Saleh was removed as military intelligence head and sent on a diplomatic mission to Malaysia. Channel 4, while covering the plight of the Easter Sunday victims, left out Mohammed Taslim, a Muslim, a Sri Lankan Muslim, who informed the authorities of what Zaharan and his goons were up to in early of 2019 and was tortured by Zaharan and his goons today. He can't barely walk. Channel 4 did not mention the indoctrination that Zaharan was subjected to since 2016 and the recovery of speeches and video clippings discovered in India and Sri Lanka. Some of them were even presented here on this channel by Professor Rohan Gunratna himself. Channel 4 also chose not to cover other acts of violence by Zaharan and his goons on innocent Muslims. Channel 4 and the participants of that mockumentary promoting the notion of a grand plot to bring Gotabe Rajapaksa to power must first dispel the fact of the acknowledgement by ISIS hailing the suicide bombers as their fighters as well as the ISIS material found in their possession. Channel 4 must also dispel the FBI report issued by the US State Department confirming that ISIS committed the Easter Sunday massacre which was confirmed on their official website. Channel 4 also must provide evidence to support the allegations by the whistle, uh, whistleblower that Major General Suresh Saleh came to a coconut plantation in 2018 to discuss the assignment with the suicide bombers. Flight details, ticket bookings, emails, uh, something to say that he was in Sri Lanka at that time. Remember, at the, uh, at the alleged time period, Major General Suresh Saleh was on official diplomatic posting in Malaysia. So, his movements are recorded. Does Channel 4 also have evidence uh, to uh, prove that whistleblowers came, claim that General Saleh uh, placed a call on the 21st of April 2019 to a, a TMVP operative uh, to travel to the Taj Hotel and pick up a phone from someone? Can Channel 4 prove such a call was made, the contents of such a call from Malaysia? I mean, call records exist, don't they? 
This mockumentary by Channel 4 has more holes than Swiss cheese. There are more questions than answers. The plugging, by plugging irrelevant incidents unrelated to Easter Sunday, Channel 4 has proved it has no case against Major General Saleh. All their main aim is to claim that the murders were planned by the Rajpaksas and not ISIS. This is certainly a serious allegation and cannot go without a challenge. Channel 4 must provide the proof and evidence to negate the established notion that ISIS was the reason why an indoctrinated team led by Zaharan Hashim wanted to avenge, and, uh, avenge the defeat of ISIS by committing multiple attacks in Sri Lanka to signal the new ISIS caliphate in South Asia. If Channel 4 has any evidence to prove this version wrong, then Channel 4 and their whistleblowers must provide far more than a comic relief. Let us also not forget that the Supreme Court ordered former President Sirisena, who was, uh, who was the president during uh, the Easter Sunday massacre, to pay a compensation of 100 million rupees. The Prime Minister, who is presently the interim president, must also pay the same amount upon the conclusion of his term in office. Other officials were also required to pay compensation. One of these uh, officials uh, were the former head of state of intelligence who, in his evidence to the commission, claimed that intel reports received would have reached nearly 15,000 people who knew about the attacks prior to the attacks. 15,000 people, around 15,000 people knew prior to the Easter Sunday attacks that it, it was going to happen. Therefore, many alleging a grand plot would have also been in the know though they pretend not to. When questioned, the former Defence Secretary admitted that they were aware that they had thought some minor incident would occur. Remember that? Probably those claiming a grand plot thought the same too. And now their conscience must be pricking them for knowing that their own was cast into the lion's den and nothing was done to prevent their deaths. Be that as it may, it appears that Channel 4 has been funded to create mischief in Sri Lanka. That previous Channel 4 program against Sri Lanka uh, have been funded by the LTTE diaspora raises the question of who is fi financing this whistleblower too. The program seems uh, like it wants to make Catholics hate the Muslims and together both to hate the Sinhalese Buddhist. The other aim is to weaken the security apparatus ahead of another critical election, just as uh, it was done in 2016, paving the way for radicalization to spread unmonitored and silencing officials who have put the country first in their duties. It looks like all those parroting a grand plot appear to be party of an ugly plot to unfold in the coming months and require the removal of officials likely who will prevent them. We must learn lessons from the debacle and ensure that national security is given the foremost place and conjunction of the nature and nature of this Channel 4 documentary is promoting do not gain the propaganda and promotion they aim to achieve by providing a platform for the usual troublemakers in their latest mockumentary. Sri Lankans must identify who the enemy of the nation are if we want the nation to be in harmony and peace. Let's learn the real truth about what happened on that Easter Sunday attack. There is so much of evidence that exists. If you want, you can read a lot of things. There are books, the entire report uh, from the two commissions. We need to learn the truth. All right, let's bring in Professor Rohan Gunratna, an internationally renowned terrorism expert. He, he's also the author of Sri Lanka's uh, Easter Sunday Massacre, Lessons for the International Community. He joins me via Zoom from Singapore. Professor, uh, thank you for being here. I know you watched the so-called earth-shattering documentary. Any truth to their claims? I know you have uh, often told in my program that the attack wasn't politically motivated. Can you please repeat that? Apparently, Channel 4 hasn't read your book, yet in the, in the title it literally says, Lessons for the International Community. The Channel 4 documentary on the Easter attack relies 
primarily on two sources. One is a police officer and the other is a man called Asad Maulana who is seeking asylum. And Asad Maulana is primarily telling that he introduced uh, Zaharan Hashim and Zaharan's uh, brother Zaini to General Suresh Saleh in Vanathavillu, in Putlam, where the terrorist training camp was. And he says this meeting happened in February of 2018. The immigration records clearly show that General Suresh Saleh was not in Sri Lanka. And General Suresh Saleh was in Malaysia. So the Channel 4 should ask for the immigration record from Malaysia or from Sri Lanka. And then in 2019, again, Asad Maulana says that during the attack, General Saleh contacted him to uh, go and meet a suicide bomber whose device didn't work in Taj Hotel. General Suresh Saleh was in India at that time. He was following the National Defense uh, College course. So I think the, the documentary by Channel 4 is based on information that has not been validated or verified. So the there will be a lot of discussions and debate uh, and even litigation uh, with regard to the Channel 4 documentary in the coming weeks, coming months and coming years. Indeed, uh, Professor, what is the truth? What really happened? If, if it is not politically motivated, then what happened? The Channel 4 documentary is largely based on the conspiracy theory. And this conspiracy theory has been advocated by people who want to make political change in Sri Lanka. Even today, and even in the coming days, in parliament, politicians will use the Easter Sunday uh, attack for their advantage, either to remain in power or to come to power. That is why it is so important for the Sri Lankan government without having another parliamentary select committee investigate this incident for the Sri Lankan government to invite New Scotland Yard to come to Sri Lanka and to give an opinion based on the body of evidence. That is the three fact-finding reports, the Presidential, Parliamentary and the National Security Oversight Committee reports. Then the CID, TID investigation reports. Then what the Australian Federal Police the FBI and Interpol teams have found out because they investigated, they interviewed the terrorist suspects. So based on all this, as well as the Islamic State, Zaharan uh, says that I am doing this attack to please Allah. Not only that, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the ISIS leader claimed the attack. So all this can be considered by New Scotland Yard. But I would also make a request for the Sri Lankan government to request New Scotland Yard to investigate Asad Maulana and anyone else who has spoken in this uh, documentary because the information is not true. They can very easily look at Asad Maulana's phone, his laptop, and uh, the people whom he has been in touch with and determine whether Asad Maulana traveled uh, to Vanathavillu and had a meeting with General Suresh Saleh. So I think that the Sri Lankan government should take the initiative to invite New Scotland Yard so that uh, independent report can be issued by the British government on what happened in Sri Lanka, especially because British citizens were killed and injured. It is the right thing to do and they should do it. Absolutely. Professor Rohan Gunaratna, the author of uh, Sri Lanka's Easter Sunday Massacre, Lessons for the International Community. Thank you very much, sir. Good to see you once again. We're going to take a short commercial break. More reactions to the mockumentary by Channel 4. This is the State of the Nation. Back in a moment.